All right, so the next thing that we're moving on to in section 3.3 .3 is called the coefficient of variation. All right, so it's the only thing that we're going to cover in this video. It's a coefficient of variation. What this will tell us, well, first off, it allows for us to compare things that are in two different units. Um, and I'll explain that in a little bit more detail when we're going over our example. Um, but it allows for us to compare things that are in different units um, and allows for us to see which ones are more consistent or which one has a better chance to vary. Um, so when we're dealing with the co coefficient of variation, it's where we're dealing with two separate units. And then when we solve this, it's telling us which one um, is more likely to be consistent um, or which one, depending on how you want to answer it, which one is more likely to vary. All right, so let's just go ahead and do an, um, an example, but we're going to do a few things before. All right, before we went on, I just wanted to just talk about variance and standard deviation again really quick. Um, so as we talked about before, uh, standard, standard, standard deviations and variances can be used to determine the spread of data. So it's telling us whether or not our data is spread out um, or whether or not our data is um, grouped together. Remember the painting, uh, when we did the paint questions, the one, they both had the same mean of 35, but since the one data had a larger standard deviation, it was more spread out. Um, it, the other brand, brand B, would actually be better. So it tells us whether or not our data is spread out. So we could have a mean of 35, but that doesn't mean anything if we have the smallest number is one and largest number is 100 and everything else is in the 30s. Like it tells us whether or not our data is spread out or whether or not our data is grouped together. Um, it also allows for us to determine consistency. So if we were then uh, in this example, where if a manufacturer is creating uh, nuts and bolts, they don't want to have a large standard deviation because then that would mean that the nuts and bolts and the screws that they won't work with each other that because you have so many different variances that you're not going to be able to use all these together so it's allowing us to determine whether or not um, the items are made properly and that they will be able to be used throughout um, and then these two parts here we're going to discuss later in this chapter this Chebyshev's theorem um, and then this last part we will discuss later on in, in, in this um, this year all right so let's go ahead and start talking about the coefficient of variation. So just remember, the coefficient of variation is when we are comparing two different units with each other. And regardless if we're dealing with samples or if we're dealing with populations, it's the exact same formula because this is just telling us the standard deviation of a sample divided by our mean, and this is telling us the standard deviation of the population divided by the mean. So although they're different symbols, they mean the same thing. And then we times it by 100%. And that tells us our coefficient of variation. Um, and then when we do this problem, we'll say and talk about um, this a little bit more. All right, but this is a formula that you need to know. Uh, once again, this formula, I'm probably going to give you for your test as well, but you'll need to know how to use it. All right, so if we had this problem here, sales of automobiles, the mean of the number of sales of cars over a three-month period is 87, and the standard deviation is 5. The mean of the commissions is $5,225, and the standard deviation is 773. Compare the, vari the variations of the two. All right, so if we were trying to compare these, these are two different units. The mean number of sales of cars over a three-month period, that means we're selling 87 cars, and commissions is how much money you make off of each car that you sell. So when you sell cars, uh, the, the, the salesperson generally is usually getting commission off of it. So they'll get a percentage of what the car was sold for. So this is saying how many cars were sold, and this is saying how much the salesperson made for each car. So we're comparing two different units, how many and money. So how can we determine which one is better? So what we need to do then is we need to calculate our coefficient of variance. And what we do is we take our standard deviation, um, which in this case is five, and we divide it by our mean, which is 87. And then we multiply this by 100%. So that way we can find a percentage of it. And this one would be equal to then 5.7%, all right, for the sales. Then if we're finding our coefficient of variation for our commissions, our standard deviation is 773. Our mean is 5,225 times it by 100%. And this is then equal to 14.8% for our commission. All right, so now by doing this, it allows for us to compare 
the sales number of cars sold. So number of cars sold versus the amount of money that's made for each car. And since this sales has a lower percentage, that means that it is more consistent, meaning that our data is uh, less likely um, to less less likely to, um, to to vary. So our data will be closer together. So it's telling us that our sales data is better than our, our commissions data, meaning that we might have some outliers for a commission. Uh, they might not be consistent uh, because our percentage is higher than our sales. So if our, if our percentage is lower, that means it's more consistent. If the percentage is higher, then it means that it is uh, less consistent. Now we can't determine that just using our standard deviation because we're dealing with two different things. We're dealing with the number of cars sold, five, the standard deviation is five. Well, is that a lot compared to $773? We don't know because it's two different units. So by comparing our coefficient uh, variance uh, or variation, then that then puts them into the same unit, which is just going to be a ratio. So it's, it's comparing them in the same way. And then it allows for us to determine which one is more consistent or which one might be better. All right. So that means our sales um, data is uh, more consistent than our commission data. That is it for this video.